grace and peace to you from God, our Father, from Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. It's good to be before you this Monday morning, the 25th of January. Um, it's very quiet this morning, which is good. I came across uh, my morning reading, uh, a continuation of the idea of our story. Um, I'm not 100% sure where Father Richard Rohr is going with uh, the theme, but it's called The Cosmic Egg. Let's see if I can set this up to share. Here we go. The Cosmic Egg, my story. The modern and postmodern world is the first period of history where a larger number of people had been allowed to take their private lives and identities seriously. This marks a wonderful movement into individuation. But there is also a diminishment and fragility if that is all we have. It is a paradox. The first dome contains my private life, those issues that make me special, inferior or superior, right or wrong, depending on how I see it. I and my feelings and opinions are the reference point for everything now. This is the small self we must let go of, that we must let go of through contemplative prayer. Yet most people, including Christians, take this very tiny, even false self as normative and sufficient. The cosmic egg, the story, what is our story? We are a group of, wow. Uh, pictures. Okay. The dome of my story is often a postmodern person has left. My power, my prestige, my possessions. It, it, it's the little stage where I do my dance, where the questions are usually, who is watching me? How do I feel? What do I believe? What makes me unique? It's a passing arena, to be certain. It will be over in a few years and is frankly not very interesting if it is, if it is at all we have to talk about. My story is not big enough or true enough to create large or meaningful patterns of itself. It is all just personal anecdotes. And some people live their whole lives there with, there with no need for broader connections. Perhaps we can see how fragile and protected and constantly striving this self will almost certainly be. Self-focused people are very easily offended, fearful, and therefore often posturing and pretentious. My opinion is that if we stay in the smallest dome of meaning, we often move toward neurotic self-image. Psychologist Jean Houston puts, put it, puts it this way. When mythical material remains latent, unused, unexplored, it can lead to pathological behavior. This small and fragile self needs to be part of something more significant. So it creates dramas, tragedies, and victimhood to put itself on a larger stage. The small self is intrinsically unhappy because it, it, ha it has no ontological foundation. It is not real. It does not exist. It will always be insecure, afraid, and scrambling for significance. In Jesus's language, the branch cut off from the vine is useless. However, when we are able to move beyond the small or false self at the right time and in the right way, it will feel precisely as if we've lost nothing. In fact, it will feel like freedom and liberation. When we are connected to our story and the story, not just my story, we no longer need to protect or defend the mere part. We are now connected to something expansive and inexhaustible, inexhaustible. We can become useful and contributing citizen in both this world and the reign of God. The egg, our story, my story. 
the story. Interesting. It would have been a nice lecture to attend. Um, let us continue with this morning's devotion uh, from Luther Seminary. The reading comes from Deuteronomy um, 18, 15 to 20. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, If I hear the voice of the Lord my God anymore or ever again see this great fire, I will die. <coughs> then the Lord replied to me, They are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among you their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet, who shall speak to them everything that I command. Anyone who does not heed the words that the prophet shall speak in my name, I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods, or who presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. The devotion comes from Lauren Barker, um, pastor, class of 84. Uh, and Lauren writes, because that can be male or female, Lauren writes, in the Old Testament, a prophet was one who spoke the word of God to the people of God. It was not so much that the prophet predicted the future. Rather, the prophet reminded the people that God was their God, and they were God's people. The people had a relationship with God that was, that was life-giving. They knew God promised to always be faithful to them through good times and tough times. But life can be messy and confusing. As the people of Israel are about to enter a new land, they ask how they are to know if a prophet is speaking a word from God. It is a time of hopes and dreams, as well as a time of uncertainty and temptation, a time very much like our own time. Uncertainty and anxiety accompany us on life's journey, even while God's hand is leading us. That promise is always near in our hearts as God sustains us along our way. Let us pray. Promising God, help us to trust that you are near and very much at work in our lives and in our world. We have a new week before us. Let us continue to be good neighbors. Let us continue to fish for people. We are all called by God to be who we are. There are some people who fight that calling. Some people who only see their calling within their own selves. Um, and then there are those who think of the greater good those who add their story to our story and live out their call, knowing that God can do something special with their lives. We, live, we are living in interesting times in this pandemic. We need to continue to pray, not only for the people who are ill in St. John and St. Peter, but for the whole country as we continue to struggle through this pandemic. We've had over 25 million people diagnosed with COVID. That means 2,500, 25 million people were tested. Um, I have a feeling the more we test, the more we'll find. But aside from that, 
we've lost over 400,000 people to this dreaded virus. And a lot of us are waiting a little anxiously for the vaccine. So we continue to pray. That's the thing we can do. But we can also practice social protocols, face masking, socially distancing, washing of hands. It'll be something that we struggle with for a while. So continue to be a good neighbor, continue to pray, continue to be a blessing to someone. These are the things we pray for. Amen.